The Oracle Network. Welcome to Brew Crime. I'm Mike, and I've got two guests with me today. Yeah, my name is Wayne. Uh, I am one of three hosts on the Florida Men on Florida Man podcast. Uh, we talk about Florida Man stories and Florida history, uh, lots of legends and lore and uh, conspiracy theories, a lot of fun stuff, but it's all Florida based. And Jen. Hi, I'm Jen, and I am co host of Our True Crime podcast. And I am an official Brew Crime Podcast groupie. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and return co-host. And return, yes. I'm so happy to be here. All right. Well, this episode is going to be uh, Florida crimes based. That's why I've uh, especially got Wayne on for today. And Amazing. the beer pairing for it is going to be kind of fun here. A uh, local brewery that's got a lot of uh, fans and lore just because of... Uh, it's a little dingy, it's a little darker, it's a little weird. It's <laughs> called Storm Brewing. Yeah. They're they're really well known here. And this is their Hurricane IPA. So I thought I'd tie it in with <laughs> your weather down in Florida. Come on, that's an everyday occurrence. We love it. We're here for it. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> What's a little rain and wind, right? Exactly. It's, it's hard for us to tell the difference sometimes, but uh, we usually find out after the fact that was a hurricane. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Too busy drinking beer, uh, waving flags outside right now. <laughs> yeah, th- that's a that's a real guy, man. We met that guy. He uh, he does. Uh, he goes out in the hurricane and waves flags around, and he's uh, he survived. I think seven for seven. So we'll see. He might be pushing his luck for seven for seven. Yeah, we don't encourage it. Um, no. In, fa- in fact, I always sh- I try to talk him into not doing it. Um, but he uh, he lives for it. He, he's he's legendary status at this point. So it, it makes for epic videos. It's hilarious to watch. Oh yeah, he always adds yeah, like heavy him. like heavy metal to it. And it's yeah. like such a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love That's it. It's amazing. Yeah. So this beer is it's, it's slightly slightly cloudy. It's uh, it's kind of an amber color. Poured a little it's too a pretty hard. Amber color. It's got a, Nice big head on it. It's kind of more of a... I've had it before, and it's kind of more of an English-style IPA. Yeah, it's very, very malt-driven. Although it seems to maybe have changed up a little bit, because it's a little more of that citrus, a little bit more fruity now, but it's still really, really malt-based. It's not like a West Coast IPA you're used to nowadays. It's not like the New England style that are really hazy. What do you mean by English? English is... um The hops are... The bitterness are much more subdued, and the malt is way bigger. Huh. Gotcha. The older West Coast IPAs in the States and American IPAs are really high on the bitterness traditionally, and you can Makes almost sense. not taste the malt. It's just like straight up hops. And that's mm-hmm. changing now with the onset of uh, New England IPAs, uh, where they're like super juicy, tons of fruit, almost no bitterness. So a lot of huh. the West Coasts are so- sort of going that way now, too. But traditionally, the American IPAs are just bitterness, like straight up resin and bitter. Not that Americans are bitter, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> but Americans like to do things to 120% all the time, right? Yeah, well, I heard we're only going to get plant-based beer from now on, so I'm going to miss <laughs> my meaty-tasting brews. Yeah, so. that was a weird comment. <laughs> <laughs> it was very strange. Very odd. Did you hear now, that what was, comment? Yeah, what was that about? Uh, is that a real thing? Yeah. <laughs> There was, I forgot who it was. It was he, uh, I don't know if he was political or a. I think it was uh, some Republican, I think, that said it. Some right wing person said that uh-huh. we have to watch out for meat. Biden is trying to get rid of us from eating red meat and okay. everything. So he's I pushing. Yeah, I haven't heard that. Yeah. He's yeah. going to start, Biden's going to start making us drink plant based beer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last I checked, most yeah. beer was plant based, but who knows, yeah. right? I was about to say I'm going to start stocking away my meat beer now that uh, <laughs> now that Your we know that. Green. Well, I mean, yeah. I've had oyster mm-hmm. stouts, and you know, lots of beers have lactose now, which is milk sugar. I've sure. had uh, I had a saison that was made here in collaboration with a Quebec brewery that had crab in the boil. So I mean, not really? always. Mm-hmm. 
They did it as now, a is joke. That, I, I was going to say, is that something that you can taste? I, I'm inexperienced. If there's uh, obviously, I think the dairy probably, but like when it's like actual has actually has meat in it, can you taste that at all, or is it just kind of in passing? I didn't taste any of the crab in the beer at all, which is good because I don't like crab, but I had to try the beer anyways. Right. But with um, like oysters and oyster stouts, the beer is a little saltier than usual. So that's okay. coming from the oysters. And then lactose is a sugar that can't be eaten by beer yeast. So it just leaves that sweetness in there. So yeah, huh. there are some. Interesting. All right. Well, I might as well get into the case here. I've named this case Facebook Confessions. Ooh. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so Jennifer Alfonso and her husband, Derek Medina, were not a happy married couple in 2013. Derek had obvious anger issues and uh, seems to have been a very controlling man. Never a good way no, to start. No, it's not good, yeah. The couple lived in Miami, Florida, with Jennifer's 10-year-old daughter, seemingly from a previous relationship, as it was never mentioned that he was the father. It can be hard to figure that out, right? Now, did they did they attempt to, or just right off the bat, there wasn't a paternity test? I, I just No, I just can't figure out if uh, okay, it was his daughter you, or not. You. They kept on okay. mentioning that it was... Her daughter, her daughter. So okay, I got yeah. It. So kind chances of are, yeah, chances are it's not his relationship. He might mm-hmm. have adopted her. Who knows? It wasn't mentioned at all. Things were at a point that Jennifer was planning to leave Derek, but he was having none of that. He was said to have stated that he would kill Jennifer if she ever tried to leave him. Good God! Yeah. Ouch. This speaks to all kinds of course control to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Regardless, he was definitely a bad person. You uh, think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On August 8th, 2013, things turned terribly wrong, really fast. Derek was supposed to wake Jennifer early so that they could sit down to a movie in the morning, you know? She just wanted to spend some time with him. Mm. He didn't bother and let her sleep in, and she was pissed off. She just wanted to spend time, you know, with her husband, and he seemed to have no interest in spending any quality time with her. When she did wake up, a verbal fight would break out, and Jennifer would end up throwing some of her mascara at him, as well as a few towels, like, innocuous. like Yeah, yeah just whatever she had in her hand, it sounded like. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Not really what I would consider a big deal, but Derek was absolutely livid, and he reacted as far too many abusers do, and he pulled a gun on his wife. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. What's that... Escalated quickly. <laughs> this guy's this guy's a real treat. Yes, 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 a real peach. Keeper. Luckily, he did not pull the trigger at that time, but uh, <laughs> things were definitely getting out of hand quickly. Derek would end up leaving the bedroom at some point, and Jennifer would text a friend the following. Felt like ripping his face off and about to explode because of Derek's actions. She would also text, I just want to spend time with him, but I'm not going to beg. So that's uh, shortly before her death. Mm. The pair would end up downstairs in the kitchen sometime after the original fight broke out. Things would begin to heat back up, as could be seen on some security camera footage from the kitchen. Because, of course, they had a camera. That's helpful. Yeah, definitely helps. Derek would begin to tear into Jennifer once again. She would finally feel so threatened that she would grab a large kitchen knife from the counter. And Can you blame her? No, not at all. Yeah. I think they needed a lot of counseling. This, they're not... Mm-mm. No, no, she needed it's to not run. healthy with... She's stuck, though, but... Yeah. He has already pulled a gun on her at this point, after all. He would begin to get really physical and tear the knife out of her hands. This is the point where Derek would claim that he feared for his life, yes, after he had control of the knife and his wife was cowering on the floor. Big man. We see that we see this on the camera, right? Yeah, right, right. I, I I haven't seen the video. I didn't look for it. I didn't want to find it, but sure. it might have been partially blocked. But there was video of this altercation happening, right? Also, let's point out that Derek was six foot two hundred pounds, and his wife was five foot six and looked to be a lot slighter than him. Derek would be quoted as saying, "She was trying to take me out," and I have to say to that, "Screw off." Exactly. Yeah. He would then storm out of the kitchen and head up to the bedroom with one purpose, and that was to grab his gun again. Once back into the kitchen, he would re-engage with his wife again. When she saw the gun, she would begin to fight back, punching him 
And this was when he would shoot her eight times, all from well above her, as she was still cowering on the ground. Goodness. Yeah. She was dead on the scene, but Derek was not done being an absolute scum yet. He would grab his cell phone and snap a picture of his bloody wife and upload it to Facebook with the (sighs) caption, I'm going to prison or death sentence for killing my wife. Love you guys. Miss you guys. Take care, Facebook people. You will see me in the news. My wife was punching me, and I am not going to stand anymore with the abuse. So I did what I did. I hope you understand me. Holy Social moly. media has ruined everyone. Everyone. Yeah, but could you imagine? I mean, like, that pops up on your feed. You know what I mean? I mean, like, I'm sure people who follow this guy know he's a, you know, he's an a-hole. But, like, yeah. could you imagine signing online and you're, you're casually browsing on, on Facebook, and then you see this guy, and you're like, wait, what? He was proud of it. He was absolutely proud of what he did. Right, right. And unfortunately, like, people may not have because often abusers are able to hide that from people outside of uh, the circle, right? Right. But yeah. But I wonder I wonder how many folks, I mean, you can probably see it now, um, but I wonder how many folks thought that it was some kind of sick joke or some kind of prank or something. Yeah. You know, because there was some comments back that I could find. I didn't bother adding all the comments in. But yeah, there was some people like, what are you talking about? Like, what the hell? Right, right. Yeah. People praying that it didn't really happen. Exactly. Right. Mm. So after some time, he would leave the house and head to the police station to turn himself in. No big surprise that he admitted to murdering Jennifer via Facebook, right? Right. One other issue is that Jennifer's 10-year-old daughter was home during the murder, and he would leave her alone with the body when he went to the (sighs) station. Oh lord! That's, that and you poor know, the little thing, girl. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, she wasn't in the room when it happened, but still. Right, and you know, I was I was sitting here thinking, you know, maybe the camera is going to play a bigger role, uh, and, and obviously, you know, it does plays a role. But he posted on Facebook, yeah, you know, along with the confession. So, uh, you know, at that point, it's. Yeah. I mean, the camera comes in more in court, right? But yeah, definitely, right, right, yeah. Well, and we all know that anything that you put on the internet lasts forever. So not only is that never going to go away, that poor girl will have access to it. She'll be able to find it when she's older and she'll be able to see the whole thing if she hasn't seen it already. That's traumatizing. Well, and unfortunately too, at 10 years old, you're old enough that you're probably never going to forget that. And you know, she had to have heard it. Oh yeah. She had to have heard the fight. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, it, it wasn't the first time. So she was raised around this abuser, you know, and then ultimately it culminated, you know, in her mother's in her mother's death. But you can only pray that she, you know, maybe was hiding from the confrontation and 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 didn't have to see anything. Yeah, you know? but that's that's that that's best case scenario, you know. There's no good case scenario, unfortunately. No, not at all. Right. So 2015 would finally see Derek face uh, charges in court. The trial would go on for three weeks. He would admit in a police statement to killing her in what he called self-defense, but would never take the stand in court. Hmm. The prosecution team would bring in evidence that he planned on killing Jennifer if she ever tried to leave him, which I kind of mentioned earlier. So this portion is quoted from a BCS article. Prosecutors said that a six foot and 200 pound Medina could have easily overpowered his five foot six wife without shooting her. Assistant State Attorney Scott Dunn said evidence showed that Alfonso tried to defend herself, but was cornered like an animal in their small kitchen by Medina. Adding to the brutality of the crime, he said, was the callousness Medina showed in posting the Facebook photo. Right. Yeah, another quote. It wasn't enough that he had to take an innocent person's life. He had to make a spectacle out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that's the thing is you you ruin your self defense argument. I mean, what little argument you have, but you ruin it completely when you start posting on social media. Yeah, you know what absolutely. I mean, like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, and also too earlier you mentioned you know that wasn't the first time he pulled a gun right in nope. a confrontation. So he's a repeat offender, obviously. Yep. Could you imagine? And people stay with their abusers for different reasons, but knowing that your husband has pulled a gun on you before or your wife, anybody that's pulled yeah. a gun on you before. Right. Um, unfortunately, right. the most dangerous time for somebody who's being abused is the time when they're trying to leave. So, right. Right. Yeah. It's rough because you know, the outcome can be so horrible, but it's so scary to leave because it's, it's never safe. Right. Now 
So several Alfonso family members urged the judge to impose the maximum prison sentence. So, quote, she wasn't just a body on the floor to be discovered. She was a wonderful, amazing person. She had so much to give, and now she's gone, said the victim's mother, Caroline Knox. Prosecutor Lee Klein was quoted during the closing arguments as saying, he planned to execute Jen, and he executed his plan. He was angry, and he wanted her dead. So the jury would deliberate for two days for a total of six hours before it came up with the verdict. The verdict would be guilty on, of second-degree murder, as it seems they could not agree that the murder was pre-planned, although I find that a bit of a tough thing to take. Yeah. When it comes to this kind of, of abuse, it, it sounds like something that's kind of been on his mind anyways. Yeah, I, I, I've read and heard before that sometimes it's, um, it's risky going after a first degree. Because there's loopholes yeah. if, if that falls through. Uh, but they, I'm sure they wanted to just make sure this guy was locked away forever, best case scenario. Yeah. And then the, the double jeopardy laws in the states make it really difficult. Because if mm-hmm. if they prove that he's not guilty of first degree, then that's it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Casey Anthony. Everything. Yeah. Right. If they would have gone for a lesser charge on Casey Anthony, they could have gotten yeah, her in. That's, that's one of the more popular Florida cases, you know, that, that, that dealt with that specifically. Yeah. So Miami-Dade Circuit Judge Yvonne Colidney was quoted as saying, You foretold your future. You wrote on Facebook that I'm going to prison, and that's where you'll be going. She would give him the absolute toughest sentence available for second-degree murder in Florida. That is 25 years to life for the murder of his 27-year-old wife, Jennifer. Which I'm actually surprised it's only 25. Yeah. Um, I can't say that I'm surprised that I live here. But that seems it, about right, to be quite honest. Really? Yeah. It's one 25 of those years. Thi- it's one of those things, too, where yeah, I wonder when he's up for parole, maybe yeah. after the mm-hmm. twenty after 25. I think that's where it um, starts, yeah. Yeah. And at that point, if he's got good lawyers, you know, uh, they're going to try to plead that he was, you know, rehabilitated. I doubt he'll get good lawyers. No. So he will not be able to get parole for at least 25 years, which is a good start. Yeah. Derek would be quoted as saying, I didn't get a fair trial. God knows the truth and nothing further. Yeah. On top of the murder charge, she would also be slapped with charges for illegally firing a weapon inside a dwelling and also with child neglect because he left a 10 year old home alone for hours with a dead body. These charges would land him 15 years for shooting the gun and five years for child neglect. But I couldn't find anything saying if it was consecutive or concurrently. So it may or may not matter in the end. Right. I know often in Canada, the charges are concurrent. So if you get a 30 and a 30, it's still just 30. Yeah, wow. that doesn't seem right. How old was he again? He was 33. Okay. Yeah. So he's still going to be pretty young when that uh, comes through. Yeah. Seems like 25 is about normal, what they would give. For second degree? For second degree murder. Yeah. But you know what, though? In this case, um, that Facebook post might come back to haunt him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously it should, but I'm saying uh, in, in this case in particular, I mean, that just seems there's a level of sinister. Yeah, they couldn't prove that it was premeditated, but there's a level of sinister, you know, where you take the time to post it like that. Um, I could see I could see, you know, that being denied and him him serving the, the, the life. Maybe that's wishful thinking, you know, I, I hope so. I wonder how long the post was up before Zuckerberg pulled it. The way that Zuck works, probably a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, if it's... this was a while ago, so yeah. I was about to say, uh, it, it, yeah, I don't know how how strenuous they were then, but unfortunately, I you know probably you know one person saying that's too many, and there's probably uh-huh. there's probably a few, you know. Yeah. So he would be given an appeal, and the defense would try and say that he was a battered spouse, and try to claim that Jennifer was a heavy drug user. They would claim that drugs were found in the home a few months after the murder took place and try to say that they were her drugs. It's just, yeah. Of course. They always blame the dead. Yeah. Well, and then they would even try a devil worship angle against Jennifer saying <laughs> that, and I just say that's bloody laughable in my books. Like, come on. It's just trying to, well, trying they're to find just anywhere. throwing, they're throwing to see what sticks. Yeah, that's right. all they're doing. You know, let's, yeah. she's not there to defend herself. So let's just keep. Throwing stuff at it and see what people will pick up. Yeah. It's ca- it is character shaming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Character assassination. Right, right. Right. The witchcraft angle is, is uh, almost comical. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they really are just throwing whatever they can out there. Yeah. You know? Right. 
everybody hates Satanists, so let's just say. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and, and, and that's what I was going to say. What are they hoping for? As if that's yeah. going to, ju- I mean, you think that's going to justify that it's just- it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would you actually get know. you like a contempt of court here. <laughs> Try to use that BS. Right. But luckily for all involved, the judge would deny his request for a retrial, and he is still in prison today. So just to reinforce how unlikable this guy is, he is quoted as saying the following. I will be suing this world, Derek continued. Not only that, Unfriended, the movie by Universal Pictures, came out with a movie uh, before my trial, and this is his writing, which was unfair, okay, which was biased, and um, pretty much the point I'm trying to make is that I did not get a fair trial. I will be taking action. I will be suing, and I want Barack Obama, President of the United States of America, to focus on corruption. The movie Unfriended was as follows. Unfriended was a low-budget 2014 teen horror movie with a social media theme. It features a mysterious killer tormenting teens on the internet, but doesn't bear much resemblance to his case. The guy's just a rambling lunatic, it sounds like. Yeah. (laughs) And it was a horrible movie. I I saw (laughs) it. I'm I'm like trying to think, how in the hell was that? How He he may be going for the insanity plea. Uh, Yeah, Uh, maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, let's see if let's see if uh, Barack Obama responds. You know, uh, <laughs> it's going to be kind of late if he one. does because it hasn't happened yet. But <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's swing, he's swinging for the fences on that one. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but that's it's my case. Unreal. Like, just what a crazy case. No, <laughs> that that is, and the and the uh, your title is uh, appropriate. That's that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just can't imagine, man. I keep putting myself you know, as a third party, you know, witness signing online. Cause you know, every now and then you get on Facebook and somebody will post something and you're like, come on, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. You know what I mean? But could you imagine like, it, it blows my mind. You know what I mean? To, to, to think that there were probably, you know, children and, and friends who signed on and this guy, you know, just posted this. Yeah. Well, and, people, many, and people who knew her, you know, how many idiots fine. get right caught for all kinds of crimes just by posting on social media it happens all the time right yeah yeah well and this isn't the only one there is the one man who killed uh the instagram influencer he killed her and then posted her dead body i forgot her name offhand there was a girl who live streamed her suicide Mm -hmm. um there's been a couple of those i mean that's awful can't imagine right like you said, tuning in and seeing that stuff. And yeah. of course, like you go online and you can see any of those videos or the still shots. It never right. goes away. Right. Never. No, th- th- there's always going to be somebody that gets a hold of it and mm-hmm. it's going to stay up forever. There was a situation early on on TikTok where one of those videos was circulating and um, it was a big deal, uh, so much so that the parent company was reaching out to Facebook and other social media platforms to find out how to try and stop it because it was being uploaded in such a way that the video would start off looking innocent and then yeah. it would it would cut to this horrible video and Jeez. they could not they couldn't figure out how to how to stop it. And I think I've, if I'm not mistaken, I think Facebook actually helped them because it was kind of considered this you know horrible thing. And they have the different IP address IP addresses, and then they can reroute them to different. I don't want to say the dark web IPs, but it's really right, hard right. to actually try to catch those because I know recently right, right. there was somebody on TikTok that was their little avatar mm-hmm. was pornography. Oh, geez, and it was wow. possibly child pornography, mm. and people kept reporting it and it would be taken down. And then the next day it would be popped up under a different name. And it just kept going for like months, maybe not months, but weeks. And they couldn't get it taken down. It finally Uh, did, but it took forever to get, to track it down and get it banned. Cause one account would be banned. It'd pop up again. Then it'd pop up, you know, just horrible. That is. Yeah. Yeah. This episode of brew crime is brought to you by podcorn.com. When you start producing podcasts, you have no idea how many different costs will be involved. There's the website you need to build, audio hosting, equipment, and equipment upgrades. There will inevitably be merch that you want to produce. Maybe you have a professional logo created or want to bring on an editor. All of this takes cash. 
One of the best ways to offset this cost is to get ads and promos on your show. This can be a daunting task to try and find brands to work with, but Podcorn does that for you. Podcorn is a marketplace that connects podcasters with podcast sponsorship opportunities, such as host read ads, interview segments, topical discussions, and more. They do the legwork to find brands that want to work with podcasts, so all you have to do is pitch an ad idea to that brand. Not only do they find the prospective ad partners, but you also get to set your rates. Podcorn also protects and supports your show to ensure that you are compensated for the work that you do for those brands. We have been lucky enough to work with awesome brands such as Best Fiends, Ballsy, and Hi-Fi Candle Studios on top of working directly with Podcorn.com. So if you are looking to take your podcast to the next level, make sure to head to Podcorn.com now and sign up. You will not be disappointed with your choices. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcasts by signing up here at podcorn.com slash podcasters. Or you can click on the show notes for the website as we have a link there as well. All right. Well, now that we're done with the case, why don't we get into the little game show I threw together for this episode. Something a little different. So this is Florida Man or Canada Man. Come on. It's exciting. (laughs) Yeah. So put you two against each other here and see who wins. All right. Oh, great. I'm from neither place. So this <laughs> that, that's that's good, though. That's Do good. I get a 10 point lead from no, this? No, no, no. <laughs> it's eight <laughs> questions. It's eight questions. Do you want me to keep score or do you want to keep score there? I can cheat and keep score. That's fine. It's not, it's not cheating. It's just if you want to keep score yourself. Or you <laughs> no, want I'm going to gonna cheat. <laughs> no, I'm joking. All right. I'm keeping score. All right. So I'm going to read out the headlines. Mm-hmm. We'll go through all of them. I'll get all the the answers, and then I'll go back and let you know the the proper if it's Canada man or Florida man. Okay, okay. you ready? Do we just like say it as soon as we know it, or do we have to pretend to buzz in? Ah, oh, no, I just just you can just say it. Okay. Man allegedly uses diaper box to create fake license plates. Mm. <laughs> I haven't heard of it. I'm going to guess Canada. I was going to say Canada's also. All right. Police seek man who hid chicken in his pants, then flew the coop. Florida. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to go with Florida on that one. <laughs> All right. Mom claims boxing glove used to punch teen was glued to her hand. <laughs> Canada. I'm going to, you know what? I'm just, this is wishful thinking. I'm going to say Florida. <laughs> I, 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 need, I need that to be true. <laughs> Okay. Pajama clad nine year old steals city bus. Florida. Yeah. yeah, uh, I'm going to go Canada on that one. Fake teen doctor known as Dr. Love arrested again on fraud charges. Florida. Yeah, that's definitely Florida. I think think I've gone to that guy for. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Problems. It's my doctor. Wink, wink. Uh, right, right. Uh, <laughs> man calls nine one one about McDonald's order and says he has cocaine in his butt. Florida. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's got to be Florida. Man masturbates while holding cucumber at library. <laughs> Florida. I'm gonna give that one to Canada. I'm gonna I'm gonna toss that one your way. <laughs> toss that cucumber my way. Yeah. <laughs> Man races ambulance from hospital, gets st- gets it stuck in the mud, wasn't a paramedic. Florida. I would say Canada for that one. The more salacious, I always think it's Florida. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, let's go back here. So the man allegedly uses diaper box to create fake license plates. Bramford, Ontario. Man allegedly uses Woo-hoo! diaper box to create fake license plates. And, How? Uh, uh, where was it? Man, arts and crafts project got him in hot water <laughs> with the law recently. He allegedly <laughs> uses diaper boxes to create fake license plates. Police say they boxed in the unwasteful bandit on Edgar Place in Paris, Ontario on January 7th around 10.30 a.m. On Twitter, they provided pics of the homemade license plates while also saying the driver realized his error and that it was time to change things up. Yeah. Posted on social media? That's smart. Yeah, the, yep. the police did, yeah. The uh, guy was a 37-year-old. Oh, okay. He's facing several charges, including driving without legal plates or a license. <laughs> so that well, kudos. was Canada. So you kudos both got for that him right. for, 
Kudos to him for upcycling, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Recycle. And you know, I've, I've learned in my experience, what makes the state extremely angry is when you take away money from them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's the real issue. They're like, yeah. look, that would have yeah, we would have had seventy five bucks from that, you know. Uh, so you're going to prison for yeah, life, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so then let's open up. Please seek man who hid chicken in his pants, flew the coop. <laughs> so that's got to be Florida. Police are hunting for a man. They say put stolen chicken down his pants in Newfoundland, Canada. You're oh kidding. wow! <laughs> wow! Yep, the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary says the man allegedly took the chicken from a Sobeys grocery store in St. John's, and then assaulted a security guard who confronted him. <laughs> Look, you know when you're hungry. <laughs> yeah, but you know what though? I'm I'm glad to hear that it was already uh, processed chicken. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. It's not fighting back. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wish it would have. <laughs> <laughs> That could have got interesting. Well, it would have needed cons- consent to. Yeah, uh, right. I, a lie. That's a whole other case. Yeah, exactly. I do love the fact that the cops are the ones who said that it flew the coop. <laughs> and you know they love that too. Oh. They're, they're going to the press conference yeah. and they're like they're gonna they're gonna love this. Well, the worst part too is they had to actually go to social media to get uh, his identity because they couldn't find him. <laughs> But yeah, he had a t-shirt and jeans, uh, tattoos on both arms and sunglasses. So, you know, not too hard to find that guy, I don't think. Yeah. And then I, I don't know that town, but if it's in uh, Newfoundland, it's probably not very big. It's a very small province. So only the dogs are big in Newfoundland? Probably, yeah. <laughs> well, Newfoundland yeah, dogs. No, yeah, are... no, for sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mom claims boxing glove used to punch teen was glued to her hand. You're probably right, Wayne. It's probably Florida. <laughs> I hope so. Man. Florida was mom claims was. boxing glove yeah. used to punch teen was glued to her hand. <laughs> Woohoo, Wayne! Yeah. Usually the gloves are <laughs> off when it comes to a playground brawl, but in this case, only one glove was off. <laughs> yeah. 34-year-old woman from Jacksonville, Florida was arrested last week and charged with one count of child abuse with personal slash special weapon after she allegedly <laughs> showed up to her daughter's middle school prepared to fight another student with one boxing glove on. The you mom was going to fight. A student, yeah. <laughs> I love that she was so in a hurry to get there and fight a child that she's just like, you know what? I got one glove on. Yeah. I, That's all I'm I need. Gonna, it's a kid. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to bother finding the other one. Let's just go. Yeah. If they're under 12, you only need one glove. We'll That's see. true. 12 and older, you might want to get two. That's true. That's a great law, actually. Yeah. It says here, Edith Riddle showed up to DuPont Middle School with one boxing glove on to attend a meeting with the vice principal over her daughter's violent outbursts. When asked about why she was wearing a, the glove on her left hand, Riddle reportedly said it was glued on and couldn't be removed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the daughter's in a violent, the mom's violent. It sounds like a nice family. I wonder how they're doing. I wonder if she got the glove off. <laughs> I want to know what, how in the hell she got it glued on in the first time. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. How she get that glued on? It probably came yeah, off I'm, really easily. I was about to say, I don't. I, I I'm not sure it was ever glued on. <laughs> I don't I, think it was. <laughs> <laughs> she had her Lee press on nails. Yeah, right? and they went the glue right. On. So the next one: pajama clad nine year old steals city bus. I said Florida for this one. Wayne's probably right. Canada. Kid, you're busted. (laughs) Nine-year-old boy wearing pajamas stole a city bus in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan on Saturday morning and took it on a three-block joyride, the Canadian Press reports. The bus came to a stop after it bumped into um, into a truck and another city bus. Nobody was injured, though. The bus suffered a cracked windshield and a broken mirror. Wow. I want to know who's writing these headlines. You're busted. Uh, if I'm an editor, <laughs> if someone brings me that, I'm sorry, like, come on, man. Sorry, Wayne got that right. You got it wrong, Jen. Sorry, I messed it yeah, up. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, that's uh, somebody that studied puns in college right yeah, there. Uh, some of these writers are great, right? Well, yeah. it's a lighthearted people interest story, right? So right. make a better headline. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I'm trying to teach my, that was today I was 
my 15 year old got her permit. And if a nine year old can drive a bus in his pajamas, then there's hope for my 15 year old. <laughs> yeah, no, I couldn't drive a bus at all. I know. I, I, I respect the confidence of that kid. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I hope the key was in it. Like if you have a nine year old, that's hot wiring a bus <laughs> in his PJs. Yeah, he'll be in a headline again in the future. Oh, oh, probably. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fake teen doctor known as Dr. Love arrested again on fraud charges. Fake teen doctor known as Dr. Love arrested again on fraud charges in Florida. He was previously arrested at age 18 while illegally operating a uh, medical practice, complete with an office, a lab coat, and stethoscope. That's all you need to be a doctor. I love that he did it again. (laughs) I just love it. 23-year-old Florida man who posed as a doctor and spent time in prison as a teenager has been arrested again on charges of fraud, grand theft. uh... Grand theft auto, too? No, no, just grand theft. Oh, just grand theft. Malashi Love Robson, also known as Dr. Love, was released hours after his arrest on Thursday in West Palm Beach. Uh, According to the police, Love Robson asked clients to send money to his personal bank account rather than to his uh, shipping company he worked for. And... He is accused of taking over ten thousand dollars that belong to the company. Oh my goodness! Wow. <laughs> that is grand theft. Yeah, he's going places. So you that's both for sure. That right. <laughs> you know what, though? Again, uh, I mean, the guy pretended to be a doctor and got away with it at eighteen. Uh, I think once you do that successfully, it does give you this weird confidence where you're just like openly going, yeah, send that to my personal bank account. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? Like that that's a guy that's gotten away with stuff before. Oh, yeah. All right. Are we ready for a uh, man calls 911 about McDonald's order and says he has cocaine in his butt? Yeah. So you both said Florida man. Naples man calls 911 about McDonald's order. So, Naples, Florida. Yeah. And the cocaine, a man hinted as he was being loaded into the back of a Collier County Sheriff's patrol car. Deputies asked to clarify, I have cocaine in my butt. <laughs> yeah. He's like, look, I'm going to let you know before you find it. Yeah. Uh, 56 year old. <laughs> something to yeah. be said for honesty. Yeah. Really. Mm-hmm. I liked it. This guy, Mustafa, is it Ud- Udari, I think? had called 911 three times early Wednesday morning from the McDonald's on Tamini Trail East, and he had, he had said that they'd gotten his burger order wrong twice. Mm. <laughs> that's Tam Miami, isn't it? Tam Miami? Uh, Tam Miami, I believe. Yeah, Tam-Miami, sounds like yeah. yeah, geez, I don't know. Never heard of it. You, I, I like to believe Never. that he forgot it was there. <laughs> I think he panicked. I think he was ordering his burgers, and then all of a sudden he's like, Shh, I've got cocaine in my butt. This is a big mistake. This is a big mistake. Uh, yeah. I'm not getting my burgers to help pass it along. And yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and he was panicking. He needed that out. And then Udari said he wouldn't leave unless his burger was fixed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. He ended up getting arrested. <laughs> you get pretty specific when you got cocaine in your bum. Yeah. <laughs> That's a man that knows what he wants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Next one is man masturbates while holding cucumber at library. Well, what else are you going to do at the library? That's yeah. So true, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, you're going to you're going to go to jail if you do that though. Yeah. You can't do that. As, as long as he's quiet. So, Frederick Tennyson Davis, 49, is accused of committing an indecent act in a Toronto library while holding a cucumber in one hand and his own cucumber in the other. <laughs> but, you, but you know what, though? If you had read that part, I, I think it would have been easier to guess Canada. Yeah. That's a pretty normal, probably Monday or Tuesday <laughs> in Florida. I think the cops can't even be bothered with that. They're chasing the guy with cocaine in his bunk. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, this yeah. guy might have had cocaine in his nose. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, or something. Put those two together and they'd be a quite the superhero team. No doubt. Police say that the act occurred at Agincourt Library on April 7th, but Davis got away at the time. However, on May 31st, when Davis allegedly showed up again with another cucumber in tow, <laughs> someone at the library was quick to call the cops. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> but this, he's a repeat offender. Yes, he is. Those poor cucumbers. You know, 
Yeah. No, I'd but... love to be his therapist and just ask why the cucumbers. <laughs> but you know what, though? I would assume a library doesn't get a lot of, you know, incidents. Oh, I think they would. Yeah. So they probably, yeah, they, they probably, well, maybe, maybe they knew what to do. They saw him come in. They're like, he's back. Cucumber guy's back. You know. <laughs> Call the cops, quit. Yeah. I worked in a bookstore and people used to take dumps back in the children's section. And they, oh, were, really? they were kids that were doing this. They need to be seen by a doctor because right. they're eating something big that's not working for them. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So yeah, if that they do that at a bookstore in the children's section, I can only imagine. What. Well there there was that woman at a Tim Hortons here donut shop that was mad and dropped her drawers and took a dump right in front of the counter and then threw it at them. So uh. <laughs> mm. I tried the, a lot of like, these are all fairly recent cases. Otherwise I would have used that one. <laughs> I, I always love uh, when those cases come up in the news, they always try to give like a reason for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, there's, and, and, and there's never, look, there's never one, you know, there's never no. one that, that's good enough that justifies that. Yeah. Just, just say what they did. Uh, everybody, everybody knows, you know, there's no, there's no reason for it. Take them to jail. You know, yeah, exactly. There needs to be a good problem solving class where they can just say, no, 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 this is how, when you're upset, this is not what you do. <laughs> it's, it's multiple choice. Exactly. <laughs> do you, a, a, yeah. A is something horrible. B, right. something horrible. C, politely leave. And D, something horrible. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right, and then the last question. Man races ambulance from hospital, gets it stuck in the mud. He wasn't a paramedic. So this was Florida Man. Florida Man. Was it the little boy in the pajamas? <laughs> I, I I vaguely remember hearing about this one. Um, and I, I, again, most of these crimes just take an obscene amount of confidence. <laughs> Like, like yes. I've never, I've never walked by an ambulance and said, "You know what? I'm going to take it." It'd be really fun to just go for a joyride. Oh yeah, ambulance. yeah. But you know what? I feel like you can go down to your local EMT and just be like, "Can you?" <laughs> I think you can do like night runs with cops. So I, I think they probably something similar. Just take yeah. me around the, take me around the block. You know. <laughs> exactly. Be a lot better. Yeah. Than just taking it on your own accord. Just three and a half minutes. Be a lot less lawyer involved. Oh, yeah, 100%. See, we don't have any kind of good stories like this very often in St. Louis. I don't, you, I don't recall any of it. Now, in St. Louis, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bigger city. When you guys have headlines and stuff, do you hear a lot? Of, is, is it mostly like violent crime or do you have anything? Violent like, crime. Oh, yeah, yeah we're like yeah. top five in like death and shootings and everything. And the thing with St. Louis is we're so huge like the actual to drive from one part of the actual St. Louis County to another is probably like an hour. It's like 50 miles, you know, it's It's huge, but all the crime is mostly up into the North part of the city. So St. Louis actual city shuts down at like five o'clock. There's nothing after five. Right. Um, But it's all, everybody's spread out. It's very spread out area, but yes, there's very much violence in St. Louis. Oh, I can't actually open up the no article part. from uh, the last so one. So it's fake. You lied. The Miami Herald website is not letting me get that article anymore. <laughs> but yeah, it got so it got so many clicks. I started charging for it. Basically, <laughs> <Exactly>. yeah. <laughs> See if this one will work here. Ah, here we go. He has a, a fun like lightning bolt tattoo on his eye too. Like over, oh, good over his eye. Yeah. So the guy's got confidence. Yeah. Maybe he's a fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning. I don't know. There, dude, I bet there is a connection. <laughs> a Florida man stole an ambulance from a hospital while first responders were assisting a patient, but got the vehicle stuck in the sand and mud, according to Hernando County Sheriff's Office. Records show that the Hernando County Fire and Emergency Services ambulance was parked in an ambulance bay at Oak Hill Hospital in Brooksville on Sunday around 12.30 p.m. while paramedics were inside the hospital dropping off a patient. And uh, this guy, Terry Cronwell, was 29 years old. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I, I love that, like, it wasn't even, like, a chase. He just got it stuck in the mud. <laughs> it's just like, ooh. Oh, he's probably high. Yeah. yeah Again with the like, cocaine, he, right? <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, you know what? I'm done. You know? Yeah. I can't get it out of the mud. We're done here. I yeah, might as well give up. Right. Well, the uh, the tally is... 
Wayne got six, and Jen, I'm sorry, but you got three. Yeah, I like I said, I'm not anywhere yeah. close to where you guys so are. This, so this is for you, Jen. If you would just uh, <laughs> story of my life, like story of my life. Uh, well, let's fix it with this horrible. Actually, sound that just plays again. in the background of yeah. my life. Yeah. All right. But you know what, though? To be fair, I feel like just from pure odds, yeah. you know, if if you hear something insane, uh, there's a good chance it happened in Florida. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you could do you could do Florida crime or any of the other 49 states. That could be your quiz. <laughs> and and like eight out of 10 is going to be Florida, more than likely. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh, man. So, Wayne, what's the weirdest headline that you can recall about Florida for you? Mm. Uh, I, one that we get questioned on quite frequently is, uh, so we have uh, uh, iguanas. Oh, they're, kinda, mm-hmm. they're, they're invasive, and they run down the sidewalk like tiny little dinosaurs, uh, and they freeze really mm-hmm. easily. Um, and so at certain times a year, they'll be frozen in the trees, and they have actual signs out around town watch out for falling iguanas because they'll freeze and fall out of the tree and uh a guy um captured a bunch of frozen iguanas and put him in his the back seat of his car and was driving to sell them and uh <laughs> the heater in his car defrosted the iguanas and they came alive attacked him and he crashed his car oh, and that's uh, awesome. and we get questioned on that quite quite frequently and 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 that's 100 percent true uh, it happens more often than you would realize. And, uh, yeah, I love it. it. It's, it's kind of like the, the Tommy Boy scene, but with the deer. Did you ever see right, that movie? Right, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and it's it's just one of those things. Any of the animal ones are fun. I, I yeah. you know, I'm fascinated by it because people assume you know that we just are riding alligators to work already. <laughs> so whenever there's a headline confirming, you know, I'm like, yeah, that's I love it. You know. That's awesome. Yeah. The first time I ever went down to Florida, my mom used to live in Fort Myers. Oh, okay. And we took a drive down to some wild animal park mm-hmm. um, to see, you know, the place where they have the lions and all that kind of stuff. And we're driving down and I'm like, there's gators like in the right by the highway. And yeah. that totally freaked me out. Totally. Freaked yeah. Me out. They're everywhere. Yeah, yeah, whenever we have new college kids come to town, um, in the first couple of weeks you'll see them all standing out by the lakes, just pointing mm-hmm. and taking pictures and stuff. And um, we're you know we're just trying to get to work, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but there's dinosaurs in the lakes, you know. Yeah, well they they lived right. Um, they had a canal in back, and so my stepdad would like go to get in his boat, and there'd be a gator that always be hissing at him. He'd be yeah. sending himself on the little cliff or whatever the little wall is. I think. Well, yeah, well, we just did a special um, uh, a couple episodes ago at a place called Gatorland. That was great. Um, yeah, we partnered with them and, and just uh, really, really kind people. And, you know, the, it sounds cliche, but they said, you know, they're more afraid of you than you mm-hmm. are you know them and it's true because when you when you interact with them or get near them they, they do just seem mildly annoyed you know what i mean they just they, they hiss at you and they kind of go away like a cat would you know or uh, grandpa yeah right or grandpa the, <laughs> yeah. the only difference is grandpa can't crush you you know yeah. Yeah. well yeah. <laughs> <But> okay. <laughs> okay. yeah right not anymore yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, they can be terrifying but you just keep a healthy distance you know and it works out. I, I wish I was there to see Josh's face in person. <laughs> Man, I they put a they put a python on him. Yeah, and uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I held the gator and I volunteered to go first because I figured if I could, if I do it out the gate with confidence, then mm-hmm. they won't make fun of me for saying no to whatever's in the other bag over there. Yeah. And, and when they opened the other bag, it was this massive python, and I was like, "Thank you so much." I dodged that bullet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't have touched that t- that snake ever. Yeah, no, I gators was... are easy compared to snakes. Yeah, oh well, for sure. Yeah, no, I'd put a gator on my lap and cuddle it before I would even touch. Yeah, a snake. right. Same. We uh, yeah. we went because we're Canadian. We can go. We went to Cuba and we went on this one excursion and we got to hold like a baby gator and yeah. There was also a, like I think it was called a tree rat, which was a rat that was 
like the size of a small dog. It was huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was. Are weird. those raccoons, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call raccoons. Uh, it, it was the size of a raccoon, but no, it oh, looked wow. like a rat. <laughs> it was weird. But you know what, though, they, uh, Mike, you held that gator. Um, when I was holding it, it, and they reminded me, the experts reminded me that they're ninety percent muscle. It made sense. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, like when you, when you feel it, I, I felt like at any time it was a tiny thing, but I'm like, this thing could escape anytime it wanted to. Oh, if it really like, wanted to, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, it's letting me hold it. Yeah, but you know, it's just it's it's massively strong, even for how mm-hmm. tiny they are right. when they're babies. Which again, when you scale it up, it's like. Yeah, I'll stay out of the lake. Yep, you know what I mean? Yep. yep. That's why mm-hmm. I like here. Like the biggest thing you're gonna find in a lake is like a fish or a leech. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like here I, you worry about gators. Here we worry about uh like close to Metro Vancouver where I live, it's black bears and cougars and that kind of thing. If you get further out, it's grizzly bears and um there's some other big animals like that. Those are the ones you right. worry about. Or maybe sure. like moose. There's some moose further sure. out, but yeah, you're not worried about gators, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, no. We what I love, uh, we used to always go down and take those airboat tours, and right. I love the crotchety old men that run those boats. They, oh yeah. The very first one we took was with my niece and nephew, I believe, or I think I don't remember. But the guy was missing like three fingers on one hand. <laughs> and he would tell the story about a gator that took the fingers as he was like throwing marshmallows out for the, you know. Right. I love it. And you know, it's not true. But, oh, right. God, I love those stories. I just love listening to him speak. And A lot of those guys have been in the industry for so long, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's something, especially in the southern parts of the state, they figured out a way to make a living off the land. So their families have done it. You know, they do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and subsequently they make great tour guides because oh, yeah. that's all they've ever done. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. You know, uh, but they can sell it for sure. And, and uh, there's already the built in fear of the creatures themselves. So you don't got to sell it too hard, you know? You no, just, uh, no. Uh, and of course, you know, I'm like, what about the skunk ape? Have you ever seen a skunk, skunk ape down there? Oh right. yeah. When I was little, They'd go on and oh, I love it. I love people that can just yeah. Tell yeah they, at, skunk you know. gets the blame for everything. Exactly, yeah. they get the blame for everything. Well, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like unfortunately here. Just uh, six days ago, there was a woman that was actually seriously attacked by a cougar, and they ended up putting down two cougars that were within a very mm-hmm. small area of where she was. So it it does wow. happen. Yeah, and and it's to kind of bring it back to the skunk ape. That area is called Harrison Mills. Well, Harrison and Harrison Hot Springs, the area, is big into the Sasquatch. Huge. Mm-hmm. Like, they play in, like, the Sasquatch statues everywhere. Mm-hmm. I went hiking That's there fun. recently, and on the sign for the hike, it talks about bears, this, and Sasquatch. <laughs> right. You, you know what? One of the first specials we did uh, almost three years ago now, we interviewed a guy from the Travel Channel called Dave Sheely. And uh, he is a certified skunk ape expert. Uh, anytime, oh. anytime a news station or somebody wants somebody, you know, to talk about this, they call him. And and he came on our show. And and uh, you know, I think passion is contagious. Oh yeah. You know, it's kind of like jazz. You got to watch somebody love it before you really get it. Mm. And so when he was coming on, I was like, okay. And then by by the end of the half hour, I'm like, yeah, it's real. I believe it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's out there, yeah. 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 So, yeah, but I, I, I love it. I love Skunk Ape. Well, I mean, hey, I want Sasquatch to be real. I don't think he is, but I want him to be real. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I you want never it. know. There's yeah. so much land out there that has not been yeah. explored. And, I mean, hey, British Columbia have- is larger than California, and we have a population of just over 5 million people. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm not holding my breath, but I'm not ever going to say yeah. never. And uh, two and a half million or approximately live on like a pin drop on the map. So there's a lot of very empty space here. <laughs> and there are people who, myself included, if they ever found it and they announced it on the news, we'd call in to work and just, oh, yeah. we're celebrating today. It's yeah. a big day. Exactly. It's yep. a big day, you know? <laughs> but it's that, it's that catch 22 that I would totally love 
that they were out there, but I don't want anybody to know about it because I don't want them to be captured. I don't want them to captured be and killed. That's yeah, true. the next and yeah. studied and yeah, yeah. If if it's found, doing that. maybe I, I don't know. I feel like uh, Florida would be a good place to find it because I feel there's enough locals who might you know kind of kind of come together and be like, hey, leave him alone. You know, he's one of us. Anywhere you else, I, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, let him do the tours from now on. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, you know? He's got all ten fingers. They've been social yeah. distancing for a long time. <laughs> oh yeah, they're the champions. Yeah, they are. <laughs> love it. No, but I love Florida just because of those. The, the people kill me. I love them. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, they don't right. actually kill you. <laughs> well, yeah. If you're not well, careful, I'm in St. Louis, so that's I have more of a problem with that. True. True. Floridians. All right. Well, Wayne, can you uh, just uh, shout out your show again here as we wrap her up? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's called Florida Men on Florida Man. Uh, we're on the uh, all the major networks. And um, yeah, like I said, we cover legends and lore and all kind of fun stuff. And we try to keep it lighthearted and family friendly. And, and uh, it's, uh, it's a whole lot of fun. So if you're interested at all in, in Florida or just crazy stories in general, I would definitely appreciate it if you tune in. Yeah, I sure yeah. I sure do enjoy tuning in. It's 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 fun. It's clean. It's easy to tune in and just uh, enjoy. Which a lot of the podcasts I listen to aren't that. So it's nice to have <laughs> that little bit of a you know change of pace once in a while. Well, and also thanks for having us, man. This has been so fun and, and just it's honestly a great like time. yeah, it, it's it's like it's like spending time with friends. You know what yeah. I mean? You, you you learn a little bit. You know you uh, you play a little game and have fun. And that's dude. This is this is amazing. What a great awesome. show. Thank you very much for being on. And Jen, why don't you shout out your show too again? I am co-host with Our True Crime Podcast. We cover cases that uh, are not normally covered. A little murder, a little crime, you name it. And you can find us anywhere you have all your favorite podcasts. Thank you for tuning in to Brew Crime. You can find us on all social media platforms at Brew Crime. We have a Facebook group at Brew Crime Group. If you would like to support the show, head to patreon.com slash brew crime now. The money goes towards upgrading equipment and making the show that much better. You get one bonus episode a month, as well as early ad-free access to our episodes. So shout out to our Patreon supporters. True Crime Nana, 3 Biz In Podcast, Amber, and the Faves of Our Live Podcast. Cheers! All cases found on Brew Crime are written by Mike or the guest that appears on that episode, and the sources are put into the show notes for each episode. We always want to give credit to the people that research the cases we talk about. Check out the store at tpublic.com slash stores slash brew hyphen crime hyphen podcast, where you can purchase gear like t-shirts, phone cases, stickers, pillows, and all kinds of other cool stuff. Brew Crime's intro was created by Mike using Creative Commons attribution license audio from purple-planet.com, soundbible.com, and freesoundeffects.com. Logo design by Ben Greenberg. Thanks for listening to this podcast, and it's been a production of Pacific Beer Chat. Hey, this is Cameron from Florida Men on Florida Man. We're the podcast all about Florida. We do crazy Florida Man headlines, talk about our experiences growing up and living in Florida now. And then Wayne, one of our co-hosts, gives us a story every week about the legends, the lore, and the history that came out of Florida. We'd love for you to come by, give us a listen. Check us out at fmofm.com. This is Edward October. It's Sunday morning, and I'm here at a typical American home. But inside, Jen and Cam of our True Crime podcast sit down to record their latest episode. Though Jen and Cam are lifelong friends, they approach true crime with the utmost professionalism. They're focused. So, 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 what do you Highly articulate. Alachua, is that how you say it? Um, right. Alachua, like Joshua, but Alachua. Alachua. <laughs> you will Alachua onto my... And above all, compassionate. Honestly, I debated if I wanted to do this. And in the end, I decided it was important to honor this baby's short life. Every day, more folks wake up hungry for a true crime podcast. And our true crime podcast is enjoyed best by more people. So whenever you're downloading any podcast of any kind, be sure to download an extra episode of our true crime podcast. you like them. Available on all your favorite podcatchers or at ourtruecrimepodcast.com. See this? The mouth, it gets me in trouble.
try to get some aroma off this because I poured too much head. Someone told me one time, and I, don't, I can't, I can't confirm this, but um, I, 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 I'm not an expert at all, but I, I enjoy sours. Yeah. Um, and um, he told me he goes, yeah, that's that's done. That's it's sour because they leave um, some some bacteria in there and um, during the brewing process. And I was like, yeah, that sounds that's okay. That scares me now. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what that I don't know what that means. But now yeah. I'm just like, I guess that's what I'm tasting is uh, is bacteria. Yeah, well, is that, could, there's, that there's different or? ways. Yeah, there's there's kind of two ways to do sours. There's the barrel yeah. sour, the traditional one where they throw in you know quote unquote bugs. It's just like wild yeasts and sure, bacteria, sure. and it sours it. Or there's kettle sours where you brew it, and before you put it into the fermenters, you let it sit <clears> in the kettle with um, some kind of bacteria, which is usually, um, I think it's lactobacillus, I think it is, which is like what you find in yogurt. You put oh, wow. it in okay. there and let it sit at a hot temperature and yeah. it'll build that sourness. And once it's got to the right pH, then you transfer it over and you uh, ferment it. I feel way better with your explanation. Than... <laughs> he, he didn't embellish at all. He was just like, there's bacteria in this. And I'm like, sweet, thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you broke it down great. for me, so... Uh, it's I, your beer with a, now. it's your beer with a penicillin back. Exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. But I never get sick. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, they're good for you. They're good for you. I love it. Yeah. So I, I called this. Oh yeah. I'll just you know pause. So just uh, whenever you want, just interject. Uh, <clears> you know, <throat> talk about the case, whatever. Just whatever comes to mind. Okay. Don't feel bad because I can always stop and I can back up if I need to. Do it. That's. <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 and argument, right? <clears throat> they would have gone for. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> was where was it here? Oh shoot! I didn't write his age. Yeah, I was curious to see. You know, like because uh, sometimes if you have a twenty-five year sentence, depending on the age, that is a life sentence. You know, um, mm-hmm. uh, pretty uh, young. Yeah, with with her being twenty-seven, I kind of figured maybe he was. Um, Similar. Uh, man claims, or no, sorry. Can Usually you, the, send, me, oh, can you that? send me that link? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Apps. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I, I, my brain, I'm a little <laughs> out of it today. But yeah, you can find us on all your podcast yeah, podcast apps. I can't speak either. And I haven't even been drinking. I have. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fix that in post, Mike. Yeah, will do. <laughs> 